Hey, friend, Chris here from My Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to help you solve a common Logic Pro limitation. That is the ability to modulate audio effects for your audio track types. So this is something that could only be achieved for software instrument or MIDI track types using the MIDI modulator plugin. But I discovered a clever workaround that's not obvious, but allows you to skirt around this particular issue. Let's dig into it. On screen, I have a vocal Apple loop that I've loaded from the loop browser on the right hand side. This comes from the Vox Melodic Sound Pack, which comes with Logic Pro. So it's an entire sound pack of royalty free vocal samples that you can use in your own projects. Now, visually, you can see this is an audio region living on an audio track type. If we select the track and channel strip, you can see on the left hand side in the inspector, it's a classic channel strip for audio tracks. So I can assign an input, I can load audio effects, assign sends, load an EQ or compressor but there's no option for loading MIDI effects. Nonetheless, let's take a listen to the vocal loop and then we'll dig into how to modulate audio effects for this vocal. I've been on the road to you and there's nothing I can do. Okay, sounds fantastic. And of course I could apply processing to the vocal as I see fit, but if you want the ability to modulate audio effects, you can't apply the effect that you want to modulate directly onto the audio track. So I'm going to just remove the compressor and EQ. And next I have an instance of drum kit designer. If we listen to these two tracks together. I've been on the road to you and there's nothing I can do. Okay, cool. But how does the software instrument track help us? Well, I'm going to load an instance of compressor directly onto the software instrument channel strip. Now my goal here is not to compress the kick. So I'm going to set the ratio one to one, the threshold is zero, turn off auto gain, for all intents and purposes, this compressor is not compressing at all. And this can be confirmed by watching the meters of the compressor. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. There's no gain reduction occurring on the meters. We see the input and the output meters, but that's just telling us what the level is before and after the compressor. Next, I'm going to go to the side chain of compressor. Without doing a huge deep dive into side chaining, just know that the side chain facility of compressor allows you to kind of turn compressor's attention and reaction to a specific frequency range of a specific signal. For example, if I set the mode to high pass and set the frequency here to about 2K, if I set the filter to listen, listen to what the compressor actually hears. Okay, so compressor is hearing just like the top end or the upper mids of the kick drum. If I adjust the ratio and threshold, the compressor is now reacting, compressing to just that top end of the kick. Basically, you can narrow in on a specific aspect of the audio so that the compressor can be a little more specific in its intent to compress. However, I want the compressor to listen not to my drums, but to a separate track, the vocal track. So again, I don't care to compress, so I'll set the ratio to one, threshold to zero. I'll set the side chain here in the upper right hand corner of the plugin to the max timeless verse 02 vocal Apple loop. And now if I set the frequency range to 16 Hertz and the mode to high pass, in this case, the compressor is gonna be able to hear the entire frequency range from the very lows to the very high of this vocal. Again, with the filter set to listen, let's take a listen. I've been on the road to you and there's nothing I can do. All right, so we're hearing the vocal through the compressor on the software instrument track lane. This was the goal. At this point, I'm gonna close the compressor. I have no interest in opening it up ever again because for all intents and purposes, this software instrument track lane is now the vocal track lane. If we take a listen. I've been on the road to you and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road to you. We hear the vocals through the vocal channel strip and the drum channel strip. In fact, I'm gonna set the vocal channel strip to no output because I plan on processing the vocals through the software instrument channel strip. And I'll even change the name from SoCal to vocal. All right, perfect. So now I can process this vocal using the modulator MIDI effect plugin. And the modulator allows you to modulate a MIDI control as well as plugin controls. So let's just turn this off for now. And I'm gonna load an instance of, let's say the channel EQ. 
and we'll enable the low pass filter here. So low pass or high cut allows you to remove or cut high end based on the frequency. All right, so with this MIDI modulator plugin, I'm going to set the two field here for the LFO from mod wheel to learn plugin parameter. And all I have to do is click on a plugin parameter to assign it to this LFO in the MIDI modulator. All right, so you can see channel EQ, high cut frequency. Perfect. Hit play, nothing's gonna happen. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can. Right, you can't see anything occurring. Of course, I turned off the plugin. So let's turn the plugin back on. And let's turn the LFO back on. Whoa, okay. The low pass filter is now going crazy. And it's reacting because I assigned the LFO pattern here, this triangle waveform, to impact the low cut here. And it's basing this reaction time on a quarter note rate. If I reduce the rate to maybe like three or two bars, it's much slower. And it goes from the very top of the frequency range to the very bottom and back in a very predictable pattern. So let's hear it, as is right now. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. All right, the LFO is currently has a trigger set to free. So it's just free roaming based on this rate of two bars. Since, you know, set to a musical pattern, if I click on this musical no button, I could instead set the rate based on hertz. But I actually prefer musical values. Now, if I set the trigger to multi or single, watch what happens. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. I the LFO is now reacting to the incoming MIDI data of that kick drum pattern that I had programmed. This is an important detail. You may or may not want to modulate plugin parameters based on incoming MIDI data. But for right now, I just want to set the trigger to free. And let's play around with some of the controls. I've been on the road in you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road in you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road in you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road in you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the... Wait, so a lot's going on here. I recognize that. I changed the waveform pattern from triangle to a sine wave, so it's a little smoother. I adjusted the offset and the output level to try to hone the low-pass filter's behavior to a specific frequency range, so it wasn't just going from the very high to the very low, but, you know, more or less the upper mids. From there, I adjusted the rate, so it's a little faster, and I adjusted the steps per LFO cycle, so we can actually have the filter react in a stepped behavior. If I slow this down, you can see that this is reacting, you know, a much more stepped behavior instead of just free-flowing, which if I pull the slider all the way to the right, it's just free-flowing from wherever the offset and output level is set. So if I adjust the offset, we see the filter going more towards the bottom. If I push it higher, the filter just swings between the upper mids and highs. The output level basically is a mixed slider for the LFO reaction. Cool, so that's one way to modulate a plugin parameter. Let's now load an instance of Chromaverb. This time, I'm gonna use an envelope of the modulator plugin, and I'm gonna learn a plugin parameter for the wet slider of Chromaverb. Let's see how this reacts. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road to you. In this case, the envelope follower is reacting again to the kick drum pattern. You can see it if I set the output level all the way to 100%. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. And this can open up some really awesome creative opportunities. For example, if I create a new track alternative for the software instrument track, and let's load a session player region. And let's open 
the session player editor. I'll turn off the hats. I'll turn the fill amount down pretty good amount. That might be perfect. Let's take a listen and a look. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. I've been I hope you can see there's some really interesting creative opportunities here. I'm using this drummer region if I convert it to MIDI. So based on the snare pattern, the kick pattern, everything going on, the modulator is reacting in such a way that we're getting this rhythmic pattern of the wet slider of chromoverb. So we're adding this sort of rhythmic activity to the vocal. However, perhaps you don't want the vocal in this case to be reacting to a drum pattern, right? Maybe you want to react to the vocalist. So let's show flex. And for this, I would suggest setting flex for many of the flex time algorithms to flex pitch. And if we open the editor and show flex right within the audio track editor, under the edit menu, we can create a MIDI track from this flex pitch data of the vocalist. All right, so we have this pattern here. If I throw it right onto my vocal, AKA drum software instrument track here, if we now take a listen and a look. I've been on the road to you, and there's nothing I can do. Notice it's reacting to all those MIDI notes of the vocals. And maybe all I care about really is maybe these long held notes. So I'm going to mute every note that's not long held. Maybe I'll keep that last one. If we take a listen and a look. I've been on the road to you. And there's nothing I can do. I've been on the road to you. And there's nothing I can do. I've been on. There you go. By using Compressor's external sidechain feature, we're able to pipe our audio tracks to software instrument tracks so that you can then modulate audio effects for your audio tracks. Just make sure to set the sidechain feature in Compressor to listen. So I hope this video was helpful for you, and I'll check you for more later. Take care.